a stark contrast to my sense that something was not right. I knew as I clutched my firstborn child that I was losing my second. Hours later, I lay in a hospital bed holding my husband's hand. I felt the clamminess of his palm and kissed his knuckles, wet from both our tears. I tried to imagine how we'd heal. Watching my husband's heart break as he tried to hold the shattered pieces of mine, I realized that the only way to begin to heal is to first ask, are you okay? Yeah, and, are- and when she uh, asked Harry that question, Megan writes that she was reminded of an ITV reporter asking her that same question during an interview last year. Uh, it's something that she says that she's rarely asked, and here is that moment to remind you. I don't know what the impact on your physical and mental health of all the pressure that you clearly feel under. Um, I would say, look, any woman when they're, especially when they're pregnant, you're really vulnerable. And so that was made really challenging. And then when you have a newborn, no, you know, mm-hmm. it's a long time ago, but I remember, yeah, yeah. You know, and especially as a woman, it's really, it's a lot. So you add this on top of just trying to be a new mom or trying to be a newlywed. It's, um... Yeah, well, I guess, and also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. But it's uh, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. And the answer is, would it be fair to say not really okay? And it's really been a struggle. Yes. So in the essay, Megan goes on to say that this year has been brought has brought so many of us to our breaking points. Loss and pain have plagued every one of us in 2020 in moments both fraught and debilitating. Then she mentions people that have lost loved ones to COVID-19, and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd being killed by police, and the protests that followed. Uh, Yeah, and in terms of her and Harry dealing with the miscarriage, Megan writes this, losing a child means carrying an almost unbearable grief experienced by many, but talked about by few. In the pain of our loss, my husband and I discovered that in a room of 100 women, 10 to 20 of them will have suffered from miscarriage. Yet despite the staggeringly staggering commonality of this pain, the conversation remains taboo, riddled with unwarranted shame and perpetuating a cycle of, so- of, of solitary mourning. Let us commit to asking others, are you okay? As much as we may disagree and physically distance as, may, as we may be, the truth is that we are more connected than ever because of all we have individually and collectively endured this year. We are adjusting to a new normal where faces are concealed by masks but it's forcing us to look into one another's eyes sometimes filled with warmth other times with tears for the first time in a long time as human beings we are really seeing one another are you okay we will be yeah when it comes to the royal family we had just confirmed that the palace did know uh, that this had happened uh, in the summer and megan would go public with it now officially the buckingham palace says it's a deeply personal matter we would not comment on Yes, a lot of people are just saying this is sad. Cheryl says, a sad, but Sarah says, so sad for Megan. Jennifer says the same thing. Lucy says, I feel so bad. As he says, the hate for her is real, but I still don't understand why. Maybe because I'm American, I'm so far uh, removed. Um, yeah, people are just saying, really blown away at how sad this is. Is what we talked about yesterday yeah, with John and Chrissy. Yeah, yeah with uh, with Chrissy Teigen and, uh, and and John, where you know how people choose to mourn is their is their own business, but also you know you're always hear stories when somebody goes through that is trauma, whether it's a miscarriage or losing a child or anybody. And the one thing that hurt that helps some people is commonality, is being able to talk to other people who have gone through similar situations. And that's exactly what, you know, Megan said that she wanted to do with this with this article and that, you know, maybe she didn't realize, you know, how common this was and that's something she does now and it's something you're aware of. But hearing other people's stories is something that helps a lot of people get through. Yeah, Christine says, I feel for both Megan and Harry. I'm grateful for her talking about her loss. It brings the conversation of miscarriage into the open. I wish them all the best. I think it will, her being open, just like Christy doing that. I think it will, you know, get people, more people talking about it. Reading the article too, it's funny, you know, when she brings in COVID-19, when she brings in George Floyd, when she brings in Breonna Taylor, I got the sense that it was, you know, because no one wants to give Meghan Markle sympathy at a, at a certain point, right? So it was just her being like, there's other problems in the world too. Like I felt sure. bad that she, I, th- I thought she still felt the need to she be had like, to. Oh, you know, there's other problems yeah. in the world. It's not just about me. Like even in this instance, she feels the instance that I can't make this all about me. I need to, you know, tie it to a bigger world and acknowledge that there's other problems out there. I found that actually really sad that not for that she had to do that. It just seems sad. It, it still can't be about her. It still has to be about 
something else and not just about her. Yeah, and it's interesting because what she went through is usually that other thing. Right. It's usually when somebody's complaining about something frivolous where you say, hey, hang on a second here, there's a lot of people going through things like miscarriages. Yeah. Like That's usually the other thing yeah. that you know sort of puts the perspective in people. But yeah, I think you're right. I think that you know she couldn't have said what she said um, and risk backlash without acknowledging, you know, other hurts that are happening. Even, that even though you can be sad about both and you don't always have to say them together. Yeah, uh, Courtney says, I agree it might help to heal by talking about it. JJ says uh, she increased because you should meet. I have a feeling there, there might be something sure. that they, they create together. Yeah. Lucy says that's terrible. But another question too, the palace is saying they knew about this. If Harry and Meghan were in their official role, still very much in that royal family, do you think they would have made this public? Or would the royal family have been like, no, you can't reveal that? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I wonder. Like, you wonder if she would have been able to be this open about it if she was still in that world. I, I think the difference is this. The difference is this. Whether they would have been able to go public with it or not, that I don't know. But the way she went public with it, I would say absolutely right. not. Right. I don't think that if they were still, you know, at Frogmore and sort of under that... The, the royal umbrella, would she have been allowed to write something for the New York Times? Right. I don't think that would have happened. Now, whether we would have found out or they would have gone, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You think of all the stuff that the royal to. family, you know, keeps quiet and keeps behind closed doors. Well, stuff they time. still keep quiet and right. keep behind closed doors. Right, so you wonder if they... Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. But she certainly wouldn't have been able to affect... And that's that's the thing about the royal family is that, you know, that you want them to, to sort of be those things like Diana was. Diana was, you know, she made people feel better because she existed. Yeah. And, you know, you can't do that when you're not allowed to do what you're good at or tell the stories that you want to tell or be as open as you want to be. And, you know, now that I think about it, it would have been it would have been heartbreaking if she wasn't allowed to go through this the way that she chose to go through it. And that was, you know, connecting with other women uh, and, and